Hello everybody, Xanchos here. Today I'm going to record a video of me playing some Blitz Chess on the Internet Chess Club. And then I'm going to do some post-game analysis. I'm just going to show you how, if the game I played was interesting, or if I didn't understand the opening or something, how I'd go about researching uh, that particular variation and how to look at some games that have been played in the same lines, and also how to do some uh, pretty high-end uh, engine analysis using uh, Lila Chess Zero and the uh, Nibbler interface. So I'm going to get started here. Welcome to the Internet Chess Club. All right, so I'm just going to queue up for the five-minute pool, and this may take a little while because uh, my rating's a little bit higher right now, and there's uh, not so many people playing on the Internet Chess Club lately. So yeah, if you haven't checked out Nibbler and you have a um, you have a decent uh, NVIDIA GPU, uh, like the RTX series card especially, will give you the best uh, performance for uh, Lila Chess Zero. Uh, so Nibbler is a GUI for Lila that is actually amazing, and once I get to that part of the video, uh, you'll probably be surprised how amazing it is to actually analyze with uh, Nibbler. And Leela is just a great engine because, you know, the, the lines that it recommends are usually more human-like, more Grandmaster-like, as opposed to, you know, say Stockfish or Houdini or whatever, which is usually more kind of tactical, uh, more computer-like, or what is thought of as computer-like. Um, and... That being said, the uh, neural network engines like Alpha Zero and Lila game Zero started. are not perfect. Okay, so this is a great uh, game here to analyze. Huba is a woman grandmaster rated 2369. And right now I'm rated 2097. So, so far we have a uh, Grand Prix attack in which she's played A6. So the normal... The normal plan there when they play a6 is to play g3. Now he's attacking the center. It's not really a threat. Or sorry, she's attacking the center. It's not really a threat because uh, even though she can trade queens, I, I don't think it's that bad. If she does trade on e4, I'll get a pretty big pawn center there. So I'm going to go ahead and play knight f3. And I can't really say I'm in book. I think I've played this position before, but uh, I'm not really sure what the best moves are from here on. Now, b5 is a very dangerous move because she wants to play b4 and take on e4. I could play e5, but that releases the tension in the center. So, considering even just taking on d5. Now I'm going to go ahead and play Rook E1. I feel a bit cramped, honestly. I'm going to go ahead and play Knight E5 if she takes the Knight. Uh, would have been the D5 pawn. So, i got to develop pieces here. Um, it's pretty difficult to develop my C1 Bishop. Considering f5 and like bishop f4, but uh, not really sure. I'm going to go ahead and try it. If she trades knights now, I don't get to take with a pawn. I have to take with a rook. But it looks like f4 will be a good square for my bishop or g5. Playing f5 is a pretty common theme in the Grand Prix in a variety of positions. Because it just uh, gives your bishop more room. Now, after b4, I can consider knight a4, which is sometimes good. It looks bad because the knight's in the rim, but the knight has things to do on a4. But instead, I'm just going to go, well, if I play knight e2, my rook might have problems coming back. I'm going to go with knight a4. Uh, so my rook is just hanging now, and in general, my style doesn't have any hanging pieces. But I may win a tempo on the queen, so I'm going to play bishop f4. Okay, I have really botched this now. She can take on f4. 
So yeah, I thought I was going to gain a tempo on her queen, but it turned out she completely refuted that. Then again, I wonder if she takes an f4 twice, I can take on c5, I guess. But then she has queen d4 check. So it's not looking good, <laughs> let's be honest here. I'd love to take on c5 now, but she has the check. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play rook f1. Check. Try rook f3. I'm just desperately trying to win the c5 pawn. If her queen runs out of squares to protect c5, uh, may actually pick up that pawn. And okay, I just dropped my knight. That's, never mind. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and resign. White, White resigns. All right, so absolutely crushed. He was resigned. So let's go ahead. Let's see. Should I save this to a PGN? I guess. I'm gonna say. Actually, it's already saved in my database. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close. Uh, then the chess club. Open up chess base. Okay, so here's um, my game's database. And here's the game. So let's move forward. So g3, d5, d3, knight f6. I think everything is okay there. The cool thing you can do in chess base is you can click this reference button. I have the uh, mega base purchase, so uh, I can see if any games were played. And it looks like from this position, there were five games played, or maybe four. And uh, the highest rated player is why it was uh, 2242. So let, let's just look at that game real quick. And in that game, they played e5, I have three, bishop g2. So if you remember, I did consider playing e5 at some point. I just thought that it would relieve the tension in the center. But thinking about it more, uh, honestly, she had an advantage. With, with moves like b5 and b4, I, I can't really seem to maintain the tension. So maybe this is how I'll play in the future. A similar thing happened with b5 here, knight e2, queen b6. And it looks like white had a playable position. Maybe he's going to play d4, maybe he's going to play f5 after that. Um, so let's just get the engine evaluation real quick on this position. And I think my default bits are stock for show. So it's giving white a 0.5 open advantage, which is just a kind of normal opening advantage. Nothing special, but just a slight advantage that you would normally get in pretty much any opening for white. So now, now uh, what I can do is... Uh, Open my game in uh, Nibbler. Okay, so I'm going to show you what Nibbler is good at in a second here. So let's just say, um, so right here, this is where I played Bishop G2. And I believe Chess Space recommended E, or yeah, the, the game, the guy played E5, so. I'm going to turn analysis on. And so now you can see what Nibbler does. It shows you all the moves that are decent with an arrow and a percentage. So I think the number one move is in blue here. It's Bishop G2. And it's going to show all the replies. So you can see that H5 was considered, H6 was considered, but it's not considered very good. The percentage is actually like the percentage chance of winning the game. So 
Lila thinks that if Black plays Knight C6, he has a 50% chance, basically, of winning the game. Um, so other moves are slightly worse. So she played Knight C6, so that's good. I played Knight F3, so you can see that so far we're playing um, pretty good moves. And here she played Bishop E7, but actually Bishop E7 has a 44% chance. Now here's a really cool thing. You can go over this line, Bishop D7, and you can just mouse over it, and you can see what the variation that Leela is calculating is. So that can help you just because the variation can be mistaken for some reason. Um, or you can just see what it's thinking about and get some info from that. So that was Bishop E7. Okay, so Bishop E7. This is the line it thinks that should be played by both sides. And of course, when you analyze further, uh, it may change its mind because it's getting further into the horizon effect. But this is what it thinks is best play for Bishop B7 right now, and it keeps changing because I'm not locking the variations, it's updating its moves. But there, there is an option to actually lock the variations. And just look at this line. But anyways, uh, she played Bishop B7. Now I played Castle. And interestingly enough, if I ever play this position again. I now know that knight e5 is considered uh, very strong, and the question is why. So if they take, we can see we have 72% advantage already, knight e7, and then we can take this pawn, and if they take here, we can play queen h5, and clearly uh, things are going bad for black, it looks like. Knight g6, and take here, and I guess, what did we win a pawn? 4, 5, 6, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't know if we won a pawn, but okay, we're winning a pawn this way, so. So you can see that uh, I did have a pretty good option here. Knight e5, blacksmith move is going to be knight d4, and then I would castle, and then it thinks black's best move is direct b8. No one's probably going to see that apply that. Maybe d takes. And if d takes, suddenly I have it takes e4. So you can see how awesome this program is. If there's anything you don't understand, like it wants me to play knight e5. So it, what if I just thought, okay, what if uh, d4 here? So I can just play it. And it'll tell me there's no other good move than knight c6. Every other move is losing because it's at 24%. But 9c6, you can see visually is at 67%. So we play 9c6. You might think, well, what if I play 92? Okay, now it's telling me you gotta play a big c5, a big c5, 97, and I probably drop the pawn. But uh, where was it? Right. E5. What if they play d4? I gotta take on c6. He takes back and knight b1 and knight a3. Another cool thing about this is just that you get to see the information so much more quickly. You know, normally with an engine, you'll see a line and you kind of have to parse the variation in your head. It'll say knight a4, but you got to parse that square. And it's just so interesting to be able to just quickly see the variations considering. And, um, uh, see all the moves at once on the board, uh, which are the good moves. So knight b1. Okay, so that's about all I have for this video. And uh, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more instruction content, I do pump out some more content soon. So I'll be probably making a guide on the Grand Prix attack and I'll just tell you. I'll just think of some cool things to do. Anyways, everyone have a nice day. See ya.